Welcome to the CBZ Ruck Show, your weekly dose of schoolboy rugby across Zimbabwe. My name is Robbie Durant. A reminder, please make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. You make sure that you follow us and on uh, Instagram as well as like and share on Facebook. We want you to comment. My man, Ruvi, how are you, my brother? Oh, yes, I'm great. Um, I had a fantastic weekend down in Esgodinia. I watched some really good rugby. But more importantly, uh, it was also Mother's Day. We're going to be talking a little bit about that as well. Happy Mother's Day to you all, especially those that are supporting <laughs> the kids uh, playing rugby in, in schoolboy rugby. So let's quickly take a look at the menu. I did mention about mothers, and we're yeah. going to be looking at how mothers are supporting their kids, how they're actually coming to every one of these games. They're actually joining in the songs, singing some of them, and may not even understand half of what they are singing, but they are right there and they're showing their heart and support for the kids, Very important. which is amazing. And then we're also going to take a look at the two games that we were able to screen live for you on the uh, Cairo Sports uh, Facebook page, as well as on the YouTube channel. Uh, that was Hellenic taking on Peter House, uh, Peter House railroading there, and then Falcon also finding it very difficult hosting the Tigers down in S. Godini. And we're going to look at those quite specifically. Uh, but beyond that, we're also going to be looking at players uh, that did it for us uh, during this weekend. Uh, some players played some awesome rugby. And we're going to be looking at some of those uh, stats and tracking all of that uh, through. So we welcome all your comments. would love to hear your, your thoughts as well as to what we would have suggested as well. Well, Ruby, also the Player of the Week. That's going to be exciting coming up at the end. Part of our presenter's license, so we're allowed to. Uh, a reminder as well that we did catch up with the mothers. Uh, we've got fantastic uh, stuff coming through. Just the importance of mothers. That's going to be coming up after the break. Welcome back to the CBZ Rack Show, covering all your school sports in Zimbabwe. Uh, our mothers are so important, Ruvi. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, our moms and how important it is to have that uh, support. Oh, yes. I can actually tell you a little bit of a story. My uh, first time playing for the Colts A team at Highlands Primary School against Ruzawi. Uh, it was a huge fixture back then. Uh, my, my mom and, of course, my dad, they came through. Uh, they supported me in that particular one, but that was the first and last one. Unlike for, <laughs> <laughs> unlike for others who have the consistent support, I think it's, it's massive. I think uh, there's uh, nobody who nurtures more than a mother. Absolutely. And many of the times you actually find uh, mothers are there more often than the dads. You know, Absolutely. dads, we're hustling. We're trying to make sure that the boy has got his boots and everything. Mama's boys, mama's yeah. boys. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. Uh, yeah. My parents were from Zimbabwe. I was playing in South Africa. Mm. And they would come down once a year. And that was just so incredible. Uh, and special to have my mom there. So, yeah, the CBZ Ruck Show managed to catch up with parents and kids at uh, the incredible clash at Alenic. Uh, let's check this out. I'm here because my son was, was playing and I just needed to give him the support that he needed. Being a mom means being a personal ATM. <laughs> being a mom is enjoyable. I'm raising good, strong men. It's uh, a responsibility, but a sweet one, because you have to be exemplary to your kids. They are looking up to you. Being a mom means being a taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> I think the rewarding thing about being a mom is the love that they give you. And then the most heartbreaking thing is, you know, you have the sleepless nights. You wake up in the morning. The moment dad shows up, it's like, he's the best thing ever. Um, I'm going to make breakfast for my mom. Um, I'm taking you out for lunch. I'm getting a chocolate and taking out for breakfast. Um, I'm gonna buy a flowers. I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm gonna make a breakfast. I'm gonna draw a picture. I'm taking her for breakfast. I'm buying her flowers. We love you, mom. Happy Mother's Day. How special is that? I mean, that really is uh, the pinnacle of the CBZ Rack Show, bringing you such important stuff to the screens, Ruby. Uh, drawing a picture is... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he did. I wonder if he did. <laughs> well, look, if he's a Pablo Picasso or a Van Gogh, then it's fine. I think, I think that would be great. But I think the, the, the important thing is that I've seen quite a number of athletes that have gone on and become significant uh, athletes for us That's in right. Zimbabwe that have had massive support uh, from not only their parents but specifically yeah. from their mothers. So I think it's just so amazing uh, that this is the case. But yeah. uh, I didn't see any of them drawing pictures. That's, that's one thing I got to <laughs> Well, Hellenic uh, played against Peter House at home. We're going to be catching up with that as well as the captains and coaches interviews coming up after the break. 
Welcome back to the CBZ Ruck Show. A reminder to please subscribe on YouTube as well as follow us on Instagram. Like, share, comment on Facebook. And please make sure that you check out Kairos Sports. With a Y, Kairos Sports. Right. <laughs> big big clash there on Saturday. Peter House was dominant. Uh, I had the privilege of being there. And just uh, for the first 20 minutes, uh, Hellenic was in the game. Yeah. And then they seemed to just, uh, that dominance of Peter House just came through and really, really unsettled them. All right. So maybe, Rob, uh, because you were generally going through that, and, and before we get into the highlights, I mean, uh, what was the general feeling? Was it maybe the aura of Peter House coming into uh, the Hellenic space or maybe just... Um, Hellenic just not executing their plans as they would have planned throughout the week. Look, their lineouts were very strong. So what they were doing is uh, uh, number four, Drake was outstanding. He was taking brilliant ball, and when they were driving and they were putting Hellenic under uh, uh, Pitas under that pressure, um, they they scored two tries from that. So you know if they had continued to keep it tight, I think that would have been better. But when they opened it up, uh, Pitas is so strong in the backs. Uh, you know their 12-13 uh, were outstanding. That's where things just opened up and those guys created havoc as well as their, their number 11 was outstanding. Oh yeah, well anyway, whilst actually talking about whether 12 or 13 was expansive or not, uh, we get to see uh, some of the highlights uh, coming through from uh, Pete House and Hellenic. Hey, that guy runs, you have to go to church. Massive hit coming in. Quick tap and go by Gemmel. He's trying hard, the young man. Good 45 angle. Excellent work now, pulled up by Lenik. Well, that's a try. Macmillan. This is going to be danger. It's a little dab through. Lovely play. Beautiful work by Magoto Aka. <laughs> you can pronounce that name, Gary. What a very, very good try there by the boy. You know. Great line out there. Well taken by the big number four. That's pick and go. Mudimo. That's try time for Mudimo. Just had the vision to look up. Okay, we're back at the CBZ Ruck Show. Obviously, the clash there between Pilas and uh, Hellenic was was tough. Um, Ruby, your, your opinion? Uh, look, um, the number 13 there clearly looking like he was just totally railroading everybody Absolutely. in the middle of the park, uh, Maguta Corner. And uh, I think one of the major things that Peter House will benefit from is the speed that is in the back line. Yeah. Maguta Kona himself was arguably one of the fastest in Zim, particularly oh. going through the relays and uh, and everything like that. So uh, that will stand in good stead for them as they go into the season because pace in the back line, uh, to be honest, uh, just tracking back to the St. John's uh, Derby Day Festival, I didn't see too much pace from most of the schools yeah. and I think that will stand in good stead for him and actually one of the major plays that he played was the chip and chase uh, which he was then able to uh, get a hold of and score that try yeah. so Peter also benefit a whole lot from him. Well talking about Peter they've also stamped their authority in the lineouts they've got a very good uh, forward pack they lose trio their two locks are outstanding as well mm -hmm. uh, the props get through a lot of work uh, Hooker was also outstanding. So really a, a polished performance. I felt a lot, of, a lot of work still to be done. I did catch up with, uh, with the coach as well as the captain of both teams. You can check this out. Uh, the experience was okay. I mean, Pete House, we were the team that hadn't gone on tour. So everyone was wondering what we were doing. Uh, we were working hard behind the scenes, you know, putting in the work whilst everyone was doubting us. So it was just good that we could put something on the board and you know we play as a team and produce such a big score like that. Uh, yes, I scored three tries, two in the first half and one in the second half. Uh, the one in the first half, the, the chip and chase, yeah we had been practicing that, uh, it, was, it was, I'm happy, I'm happy it, was, it came out good. I wouldn't call it polished, um, I think there's still a lot of work out there. Um, rusty, yes, I'd say rusty. Well, we obviously haven't got the size of a lot of uh, packs out there. So, yeah, so there's, uh, we're more of a, a, a fast side, I'd say, a quicker side, quicker ball. 
I would say there are probably about six six guys who really stood out, and then other guys who just put in the graft. So it was good. Well, obviously, when I spoke to uh, St. John's, they wanted a commitment immediately, and uh, and we were we were destined for Portugal at the time. So, yeah. hey, every game as it comes. I mean, you got Lamagani next week, who are looking very good. I mean, uh, all those sides are looking very good. There's no there's no any one side that is out and above. You know, I think. Uh, yeah, it's going to be game one game at a Well, yeah, we came with the right mindset, I think. But when they came onto the field, we just didn't manage to execute. But I think we said as a team, we're going to take it as a learning experience, move forward, learn from it, um, and get better every week from here. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's part of our strategy, um, to use the forwards, suck them in, suck them in, and then use our pace on the outside. Today, just one of those days, unfortunately, we, weren't man we didn't manage to execute. Um, and yeah, I say again, we learn from it and do better next week. Yeah, definitely a tough one for first up, but yeah, we'll dust it off and we'll see what to do next week. Yeah, definitely for Drake and Dylan, yes, it's their second season, so obviously some experience in there will help with, with the play. But definitely we, we couldn't get it going. Sometimes a scrum, one play, turnover, so you can't play rugby like that. Yeah, definitely. Trying to catch up to them was tough. So yes, we told our boys, yes, go to them, but you can't keep up for 17 minutes. Yeah. So it was tough. Okay, so I said, yes, game one, they showed us stuff we need to work on. So that game is out the way. Next week, we get on again and we look forward to the next games. Oh, wow. Uh, so a, a, a tough pill to swallow there for, for Daddy. Um, I know he generally uh, would would have preferred to have come out with a better result yeah. and not necessarily as nasty as the scoreline actually looked. Uh, but also at the same time, uh, once you do get some of these lessons, then you, you, you get to rise up and do a little bit better for the season, Rob. Look, I saw some positive stuff out of the Lenick as well. I mean, it's, it's not all just doom and gloom. Um, as I said, the Fords, if they dominate a little bit more, they have got a good Ford pack. Um, so, you know, if they can just dominate a bit more, tighten up, a lot of pick and goes as well, we're working for them. Um, and if they can infiltrate on that, nine, Gemmel was outstanding. Rousseau also was a good player, obviously just... Just one mistake probably in the game where he gave a long pass and uh, there was an intercept. But otherwise, otherwise um, it wasn't a, b a bad bad game. All right. So, Rob, uh, just uh, quickly before we shift away from this, in your view, do you think Hellenic can actually pick up from, from this and have a decent season? And I'm looking in light of many of the forward packs this yeah, season yeah. are quite big. So in terms of contestation there, that's going to be a little bit uh, challenging. And then the back lines as well. Uh, are quite efficient, uh, whether we're talking about Prince Edward, we're talking about Loma Gandhi, they've got efficient back lines. Yeah. So can Hellenic actually then stand up toe-to-toe -to -toe against some of these giants? Look, it's all mindset. I mm. think, you know, if, if you believe you can, you can. Uh, they have got potential on the forwards. They were giving, they were giving uh, Pilas a bit of stick when they were doing the pick and goes and they were, they were driving. They were actually moving forward. So if they can build on that, if they can build on obviously 9 and 10, distributing further because it was kind of getting stuck between 9 and 12, um, I think we, they, they, they can improve. Oh, well, we'll be looking as to whether they will be able to improve. But talking about a team that needs improvement, it is uh, Falcon after the challenges that they had in the Mad Dogs pit against Prince Edward. That coming up next. Welcome back to the CBZ Ruck Show, uh, your dose of school sport across Zimbabwe. It was Prince Edward traveling to Falcon, and there was a massive gust of wind. If I had hair, it probably would have blown off. <laughs> eh? What would have happened? <laughs> well, I'm sure you would have been glad that you don't have hair, because that one actually <laughs> <laughs> took one of our cameramen, Benji, who has got hair, so that could have been a parachute. But anyway, <laughs> let's just go into it. I think it was, um, yeah. it came literally out of nowhere. We were watching, or rather we were actually uh, recording the second team game, and then this gust of wind rises up, and we think, ah, maybe it's just going to get into the uh, supporters and then just stop. But it just literally jumped over the school kids from Falcon, comes to where we are, blew the gazebo tent, uh, where um, Ian Riley, who was, of course, taking care of all of the graphics and so on, blew the TV, hit him on his head. Our cameramen were almost blown off the scaffolding as well. I was um, quite lucky in that I was in the scaffolding, so it was difficult for the wind to actually blow me away. So it was 
uh, really challenging. So the parents across <laughs> the field say, we just saw this drama happening and there was no whirlwind on our end. It wow. was all on wow. your end. So it really was quite weird in the way that it happened. Well, that's the risk that we go through to bring you the CBZ Rack Show. <laughs> uh, let's unpack it now. Mm -hmm. Great game. You were up there. At, at, at the, obviously, the atmosphere, everything was happening, the game as well. Mm -hmm. uh, PE certainly stamped their authority there. <laughs> oh, yes. They actually started stamping their authority <laughs> way before. Yeah. Uh, that was at uh, around about 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. We're just waking up and, and we begin to hear war cries. Now, we initially thought that maybe it was Falcon, which were trying to psych themselves up, only to discover that it was Prince Edward that were walking through the entire college wow. and they were singing. Confidence. So, uh, so confidence. that was confidence and that was also intimidation against yeah. Falcon College. And from that point, you could even tell the body language uh, was different. Yeah. Uh, Falcon were able to pick up uh, one or two wins there uh, down at the fourth team and so on. But when, once it came uh, to the first team, the body language was not there. They already had a number of injuries that were yeah. there from key players. So it just didn't quite work out for Falcon. But I think Prince Edward uh, played a good number on them psychologically and then ultimately physically on the field of play. Well, it's all about mindset as well, isn't it? Uh, getting into, into the opposition's mindset. Uh, we are going to be coming up with uh, highlights now as well. We're going to be checking that out now. So, so then we've got Tyreek Mutuma, who's a co-captain at Lustrio. And then we've got Mpagore at number seven. Alan Maunga returns from the Young Sables duty, winning the Bartes Trophy, where he did a fantastic job. He's the eighth man and coach. Ujeneza is going to be sending that line out in, well taken by Prince Edward and being sent out. Maunga in the line. Well, that one is sent out wide. They do have numbers and overlap. Taken by Prince Edward. Pops it back inside. Miss tackle upon Miss tackle. And Prince Edward are going to put down the first try. Big ties, and there it is. Prince Edward with points on the board. Five points there. Ten points to nil. And a good feed for Prince Edward. And Rusike sends it out. Felt like it was knocked on. But he is going to slice right through. Is the fly off here going for another try? And Prince Edward have it. But steady with the scrum. Aikman breaks. Maunga hits another. Breaks a couple of tackles. He really wants it. He's going to turn over Chris and got it down. The captain has put down five more points. That's what we'll be looking for the pass to Chisungo. Ah, looking to break it through. He gets it. They found the inspiration. They decided to go against taking the three points. Dogs back. The Mad Dogs can slip the try line. Mawere going for the big hit. Turns round and it's try time. Oh, what a game. Uh, Prince Edward certainly stamping the authority. You've got some great stats and information for us about the game. Oh, yes. Uh, let's start off with the fact that Falcon actually had most of the possession, but they really <laughs> couldn't get any points on the board. Yeah. And um, if you just look at the ball carries that they had, they had uh, 74 ball carries as compared to 26 wow. uh, from Prince Edward. Now, uh, Falcon were really trying to get some face play going. And... Um, we could see a lot of that uh, coming through the likes of uh, Dominic uh, McKechnie, who is uh, their eighth man. Uh, we also saw uh, one of their locks there, Andrew Brebner. He was there trying to uh, just get more face play going, but unfortunately just quite, uh, wasn't quite working out uh, for them because turnovers were happening. And also at the same time, uh, Prince Edward were defending quite a lot. And you can even see within the tackles uh, that uh, were then made uh, by Prince Edward, they made a lot of tackles yeah. and 67% of them were actually completed. So that shows you that they had a strong defensive of, um, you know, a line that was right up there. And when I even spoke uh, to the stand-in coach, that's Tawanda Jimu, because Sean D'Souza didn't go down with them. They said that their 
uh, their uh, strategy was to ensure that they were right up in the faces of Falcon. They didn't necessarily have to tackle there and then, but just make sure that you're right up within their faces and then we'll be able to screen them. Yeah. And they did that quite perfectly. Well, games are won on defense as well. And uh, we managed to catch up with the coaches and captains of both teams. Yes, sir, definitely. It is, uh, you know, we've been working really hard and the boys have been coming in their numbers, you know, showing dedication and commitment. So it, it's, it's a sensational feeling when you know, things are working to plan, our coaches' structure is working, and hence why the scoreboard looks like that today. It, it was all about teamwork, you know, just uh, running in their faces, shutting them down, and good communication. And I love that the boys did that today. I believe we just need to come out strong in the beginning and hit them harder. Um, we started off badly, but we ended up coming back. But I believe if we, if we start off with that momentum, we can do better next time. I think it comes down to a bit of fitness, ball skills. So we'll be working this week on fitness, handling and all that, so we can execute all the opportunities we get. Uh, it's definitely not a way to start the season. Uh, listen, um, no one wants to, to obviously take off the mark with, with a loss at home. And listen, this is our sacred home, sacred ground. We needed to have defended it. We needed to have played better rugby. And obviously, it's unfortunate that we ended up on the losing side. But credit to Prince Edward. They came guns blazing. They wanted the game. They played their style of rugby, which was very effective. And they got us to offset us. So well done to Prince Edward at the end of the day. Well, uh, like Derek Chiwara pointed out there, they came out guns blazing. You do not want to allow uh, Prince Edward to run it within their back line. I must say uh, Tinoru Sike as well as um, uh, Kunaka, who is uh, their scrum off, had a fantastic understanding. The ball was moving so fluidly uh, between them. And then there was an, a bit of an experiment that they actually did. Uh, the co-captain there, Alan Maunga, uh, came in and was also playing in the back line, particularly for the first 10 minutes of the game. Oh, yeah. So what they were doing is they were getting him to play in the back line, even though the scrum was set, remove one of the centers, put him in as an eighth man. Once the ball then comes out, they use Maunga to hit on the back line of a Falcon, and they just couldn't uh, handle some of that physicality within the first oh. 10, 15 minutes of the game. Or well, talking about that, just special movements, even with the uh, uh, Pidas versus Lenik, uh, number nine, and Macmillan was jump, uh, using a lot in the line -out. So just slightly different play by, by the teams, and it's fantastic to see. All brought to you by the CBZ Rack Show. We're going to be catching up with, uh, obviously, results, rankings, and predictions all coming up after the break. Welcome back to the CBZ Rack Show, your dose of schoolboy sport across Zimbabwe. Uh, we've got results as well as uh, rankings as well. That's exciting stuff. We're going to be ranking the teams uh, from top to bottom. So <laughs> he's the man. <laughs> and I know there's going to be so much in terms of argument concerning that one. But anyway, let's look at results. Now, uh, results coming through from week number one of the schoolboy rugby season. Falcon College, unfortunately, falling at 31 points to 15 to Prince Edward. So Tigers are very happy there. Uh, Peterhouse railroading Hellenic, uh, 68 points uh, to 7. Uh, St. George's also had a good one as the Dragons roared 46-10 against uh, Christian Brothers College. St. John's College were also in a no-nonsense mood with a 74 uh, points to 3 win over Kyle College. And then there was a tight one, but the Elephants uh, coming out, that's a uh, Milton uh, coming out winners, 15-13 winners over Alan Wilson. Heritage also had a good victory over Watershed with a 22-16 win. And then Gateway able to steal one against Goldridge out there in Kwekwe, 23 points to 21. Loma Gandhi as well, the Bisons uh, were also definitely ramming through as they uh, won 62 mm. points to 3 against Eaglesville. And then Petra and Midlands Christian College, uh, Petra coming through with a uh, with a loss rather. So those are the results there, Robbie. Ruby, uh, Loma Gandhi, <laughs> I, I did speak to the headmaster yeah. and he said that uh, 400 kids in a hostel, are they building momentum there to become one of the dark horses or one of the, the contenders for that top spot this year? Uh, look, uh, they started last year. I must say they started last year with a very good season. And, of course, they had the electric Edward Sigauke to help them in that particular season. He was scoring tries for fun. And it 
made them a very formidable side. Uh, but this time round, they are coming back with a team with a, a relatively unknown entities within their side. But they've got a big pack. We saw they drew against uh, of Falcon College in the last match at the John's Derby Day Festival. And we also saw that there was a narrow defeat, though one that they will contest yeah. against Churchill. So I feel that Lomagandi will definitely be in there with a shout. A shout. But the surprising one for me is actually Heritage beating Watershed College. Oh. I, I yeah. didn't think that would actually happen. I do, yeah. It wasn't supposed to happen. I know a couple of people would say it wasn't supposed to happen, <laughs> but it yeah. did happen. So uh, Heritage would feel they're on the up. And I think with contributions uh, coming through from uh, the likes of Gordon Pangeti and Crispin Mike himself uh, adding to that rugby program, it is paying some of the dividends. Well, I've got a soft spot for Heritage, so let's see. Hopefully they're coming through. Gordon doing a good job there as well, Pangeti. Um, so what we're going to be covering, upcoming fixtures coming up this weekend with potential predictions from the two of us. That's coming up on the CBZ Rack Show. And a reminder, please, to make sure that you subscribe on YouTube, follow and like on Facebook, and make sure that uh, you share. We want you to make sure that you're watching all our programs, uh, live streaming coming up on Saturdays. We'll catch you after the break. I'm Robbie Durant here on the CBZ Rack Show, and we have now got our fixtures for this weekend. Reminder, we want you to get onto Facebook, like, share, and comment. Comment and let us know what your predictions are for the games coming up this weekend. Oh, yes. Uh, but before we actually get into that, we do have the CBZ Rugby Development Initiative. And I must say uh, that it's uh, been good going. I mean, uh, they uh, took part in some fixtures, uh, Sevens Rugby, uh, some of those old schools are coming back into yeah. the thick of things. So I'm so happy. Happy uh, that CBZ has come through, are supporting this. And next week, we're going to be highlighting some of the results that came through from that. And, of course, looking at how all of this infrastructure is going to be developed once again. I mean, I would love to see how Lord Malvin's fields are going to be coming up again. Uh, Cranebourne, maybe, how, how that's going to be coming up again. So hopefully we get to see all of that next week. And you'll be joining us uh, to see this beautiful rugby development initiative. Well, the CBZ rugby development also is going to be giving that diamond in the rough, the opportunity to be seen, obviously, with streaming as well, to make sure that we do pinpoint and we find those guys and give them the opportunities that uh, everybody wants to be given. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so let's look at the big weekend. It is the big weekend yeah. when it comes uh, to rugby. It is the Derby Day weekend. Everybody is preparing for this. Uh, they are ensuring that blood, sweat and tears <laughs> will definitely be shed on the field. So let's quickly go through some of the fixtures here, uh, Robbie, that we have uh, first up Eaglesville taking on Hellenic at Eaglesville. Uh, that one will be played around about mid morning at, at 11 a.m. And then we will see a Heritage also taking on Gateway. I think that promises to be a pretty that good fixture good yeah. uh, since both Heritage and Gateway uh, were able to sneak in uh, some wins. And then as the day progresses, this is now across the country, we'll see Milton College, uh, Milton rather, Milton High School taking on Plumtree. And that will be cool. at quarter past two in the That's afternoon. The uh, we've also got Hillcrest and Watershed. Uh, this one will be played in Marondera. And uh, that one will also be at 11 a.m. Out in Mashingo, uh, that is uh, close on uh, there to Kyle, uh, that will be um, uh, Mashingo versus Midlands. And so uh, that will be played at Kyle College at 11 a.m. Then things begin to get interesting. <laughs> the moment that the clock begins to hit three, we now begin to see the big ones. Peter House will be hosting Loma Gandhi at Peter House. Believe oh. me, that one is going to be an explosive one. I would have loved to have attended that one, but you know where my loyalties lie. <laughs> and that's exactly where I'll be. And that'll be <laughs> Prince Edward will Purple. be hosting the <laughs> Churchill uh, Bulldogs. That'll be at uh, quarter past three okay. at Jubilee Field. That one is going to be an absolute cracker. I'll be on commentary for that one. And then the Rams, the St. John's College, will host the Dragons. The Saints, uh, they love to call themselves, but there will be nothing sainthood about what will be happening on the field oh, of play. Nice uh, cracking ribs, literally, <laughs> at 3 p.m. So anyway, let's quickly go through this one. Uh, let's start off Eagles with Hellenic. Uh, who's your money on? I'm going to go with Hellenic. I think they can bounce back. Mm -hmm. um, I do see potential there. I'm going to go with Hellenic. 
all right. I, I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll hustle too much against Rob <laughs> on that one. I, I do think Hellenic uh, might be a little bit decent, but uh, don't count Eaglesville out too much. Yeah. Remember, they do have a former Sables manager in Cyprian Mandenge. You True will story. be looking to plan against Hellenic. Uh, let's look at Heritage versus Gateway. Who would you put your money on? I'd like to put my money on Heritage there. Um, obviously, bouncing off the win last week, their tails are up. I know those kids, when they get a bit of confidence and when they get a bit of heart, they could do it. All right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> when I look at the technical teams of both sides, uh, you've also Very got Sikelelo Sykes, uh, Sibanda. He's now working with the Gateway program, also a very experienced coach. Absolutely. So I would believe that's where also their win came from, good planning and things like that. So, yeah, and, I will and, give it to Eric. Sykes, what a, mm. what a servant of rugby in Zimbabwe. Oh, yes, what Certainly. a servant he is. So, anyway, I think I'll side with you on that one. I okay. think we'll give it to Heritage. Uh, let's look at Milton Plumtree. That's an age-old Matibel and Derby there. You're going to come in on this one. Oh, okay. yes. Um, I, I, I would give this one to Milton. I think Milton have been getting their rugby program going on pretty well. Oh, wow. The support from the old boys has been really good, and we're seeing even some of the youngsters participating in the under-20 league, which happens down in Matlin. Land. So yeah. I would love to see Milton uh, winning that one. I think they will win. Well, my dad went to Plumtree, so I'll, I'll side on them. And, uh, <laughs> and Zimbabwe beat the All Blacks back in the day, remember? <laughs> oh, yes, of remember course. That, at, at All right. Oh, yes. And then um, uh, Petra will face uh, Western Suburbs. Uh, Western Suburbs, one of the teams that are coming yeah. up quite quickly. Yeah. Um, look, I, I think uh, the Western Suburbs, that's what's good about the CBZ Ruck Show, yeah. is we're covering Zimbabwe in, in its whole entirety. Yeah. So uh, from the teams that are not getting exposure, we're now going to be giving exposure. And that's the exciting stuff. And that's why you have to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as YouTube on Cairo Sport. All right. So let's go on to the big ones. And now, uh, Rob, where everybody will be saying, hey, why aren't you talking about the big ones? <laughs> well, here they are. Let's start off with um, a still in Blau, a CBC Falcon. Who's your money on? There. I think Falcons going to bounce back. I think they're hurting. You were talking about a couple of quite a few injuries as well. Let's hope those those kids are back on the field. Uh, money on Falcon. All right, money on Falcon. Uh, yeah, I'll put it on Falcon as well. Peter Osloma Gandhi. Um, look, mm -hmm. Pidas was, was to me, I thought was polished. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to the bounce back, I think. Uh, and Loma Gandhi's got their tails up, in the, uh, up mm, but mm, I'm going to put my head on the block. Mm. Pitas. All right. I'm going to put my head on the block, Loma Gandhi. Last year, Loma Gandhi beat Peter House. So uh, I, I am hoping that Bob Mahari will deliver another <laughs> blow. So I'm with you, Bisons, on this one. Let's see how that one goes. Let's go now to uh, St. John's College and the Dragons. Uh, that's uh, St. George's. Who's your money on? Well... Uh, what, I, what I saw from the St. John's Derby, um, uh, St. George's certainly has got the ability to stamp authority. Mm -hmm. I think if they keep it tight and they, and they work with their forwards, uh, a good 9 and 10. Uh, obviously, also, uh, number 13 was hitting the line at, at great at, at 45. St. John's, also a brilliant number 6 as well. Their team, their team is starting to polish a big win that's just come on over the weekend. Uh, <laughs> you put putting my head on the block here, St. George's. Is, oh, yeah. <laughs> St. George's. <laughs> All right, he says St. George's. Uh, uh, I'll be point blank. St. John's College will walk away with this one. I think they're full of confidence back on Honeyfield, also having had the confidence of winning during the Derby Day Festival. So I'll put uh, my head on the block, St. John's College. If George's wins, I think Ricky will just have a field day with me. But anyway, we'll see how that <laughs> one will go. And then finally, Prince Edward uh, taking on Churchill. Who's your money on? <sighs> Look, uh, Prince Edward, I think, is hot right now. I think mm -hmm. if you're looking entirety with uh, backs, forwards, interlinking, mm -hmm. uh, you see backs linking with forwards, forwards linking with backs, and they are fast. These boys are quick and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to get <laughs> Prince, <laughs> Prince Edward. He's not going to like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm it a is Churchill. Home. It uh, is yeah, home. I'm purple blood uh, all the way oh, through. Yeah, um, I do feel like Churchill is going through a bit of a transitional moment and season. So it might be a little bit difficult going on to Jubilee. They want to defend it. Uh, Prince Edward coming out with a confidence-boosting win. Unfortunately, Churchill was unable to play. Uh, that match was cancelled for this weekend, so they might be going into the game slightly rusty. Not too rusty, slightly rusty without uh, match 
match time. Um, so, <sighs> painfully, <laughs> I will say I think Prince Edward might actually run away with this one on Jubilee. Oh. I, so, I think so. So think the so. deal is on. Uh, we want you to also comment yourselves on our Facebook page on Kara Sport. Please check it out. Uh, we want you to let us know exactly what you think. All part of the CBZ Ruck Show. Right, next up, the presenter's uh, license, which is going to allow us to obviously also work through the, the top players who we thought over, the, over this last week and also looking at our Player of the Week that's going to be coming up. This is exciting stuff now on the CBZ Rack Show where we are digging deeper into schoolboy rugby. Ruby? Oh, yes. Uh, very important that we actually, what can we say, maybe verify and actually show exactly why we are bringing this show to you. It's important that you understand uh, some of the things, particularly in yeah. this presenter's license um, uh, segment, where we're actually looking at things more in depth so that it's not waffling and stuff that is pie in the sky. Mm. So we do have in-house uh, uh, data scientists, data analysts uh, that are bringing us numbers. And believe me, all of the stats that we're going to be giving to you are not the gospel, but they're just ultimately a view of what our data scientists, as well as one of our uh, wonderful sponsors who are looking at data, in particular at Stat, are uh, giving us. Yeah. So let's start off with the rankings, uh, uh, Rob. Uh, the rankings for this week, the first match week, uh, all right? Uh, just looking at the top 10. We're starting off from number 10. It is Hellenic. And when we're looking at these rankings, we're looking at the kind of side that you played with and ultimately the kind of win that you got. So these will all then add into uh, the statistics in order to give us a bit of a variant there. So uh, starting off at number 10, we've got Hellenic. Uh, quite unfortunate, they're sitting down there because, yeah, of the massive defeat that they got. And then we've got Milton High School coming in in number 9. Cal College uh, coming in number 8. Uh, Christian Brothers College in a 7. 6, we do have a Peter House. Peter, don't worry, it's okay, Peter House fans, it's okay. Uh, number five is uh, Falcon College. Number four is Loma Gandhi. Uh, St. George's comes in third. Uh, don't get your hopes up uh, too much. Uh, number two is uh, Prince Edward. And first will be St. John's College going into the first match week of our top 10 rankings. Now, other schools do fall under, uh, but we'll talk a little bit more about them as they move up okay. and down the rankings. Well, that is uh, also compliments of Adstat uh, analytical specialists. I mean, this is exciting stuff that we're actually getting hot off the press and stats don't lie. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's one thing you can't lie. hide from stats. <laughs> right, we are also checking our performers of the week. That is going to be uh, exciting stuff. There were some good, good rugby played, some top achievers as well this last week. Oh, yes. Um, uh, starting off down in Essigodini, uh, the Falcon front rower there, Mpande, he had a very decent game. Uh, he had two dominant tackles, uh, was good in the carry, and was also able uh, to score yeah. a try, one of the three tries uh, that were then scored by Falcon College. Uh, you can roll out the other stats as well. We've got uh, a couple of players that were standout. Um, a number of players, I mean, we're going through it and just seeing, but obviously having the, an analytical backup of ad stats is, is going to help us pr prolifically with all these, all these uh, because at the end of that, it's a CBZ Rack show comments and, and we want your comments as well. Oh yes, uh, uh, still staying on Falcon, we also had uh, their eighth man, Dominic McKechnie yeah. and uh, you may have seen him in the interview there, he hit 17 rucks in other words he was able to arrive there and actually contest, he really put in a shift, uh, unfortunately it wasn't in a winning cause and then Prince Edward, we also saw Alan Maunga uh, yeah. coming in he scored a try, was effective in his tackles, only missing one and his physicality and presence uh, clearly showed why he was part of the under-20 uh, Barters Trophy winning side with uh, Sean D'Souza. And then there, number nine from Prince Edward, Wayne Kunaka. What a game that he had, uh, Rob. He, he kicked all of his uh, four uh, goals that he had to kick and overall had 18 good kicks in the game. Yeah. And these 18 good kicks were looking at uh, kicks that were made, um, you know, getting out of your own uh, 22, finding touch, uh, making some uh, kicks which were able to gain a lot of territory. 
he was uh, full of kicking. And this also comes from the experience that he got from the under-20 uh, league where he played for all the Rarians. And then for Peter House, yes, the man <laughs> we spoke about him, yeah. Emmanuel Ma uh, Maguta Kwon, and he was a phenomenal, reaching an average top speed of nine meters per second. Wow. This is international rugby wow. standard stuff, I tell you. It's super, super quick. And I'm sure maybe some of the franchises right now who are watching uh, the live stream uh, that's happening will also be saying, hmm, he would be a fantastic addition. And then finally, uh, the Hellenic flanker, that's Pharaoh Mazui. He, he covered some serious ground. Uh, 5.28 uh, kilometers in the game with a high work rate. That's really, really good. I mean, even when you're watching football and you're seeing substitutions happening and you see many of the players are, you know, yeah. covering a distance of around about six to seven Ks. So if he's covering 5.28, he's right up there with professional players. Yeah. Well, uh, talking about 13, just that, that speed, that first five meters, he's just incredible. Mm. He's big, he's strong. It's exciting stuff. Uh, thank you very much to Avstats as well for bringing those uh, out, part of this CBZ Rack show. Uh, we've now got the Nutri-Active Play of the Week. Now, that's exciting where we're going to single-handedly find out the Play of the Week and you're going to be hitting us with that. Oh, yes. Yeah. So the Play of the Week actually comes from Emmanuel Maguta Corner for his chip and chase and yeah. ultimately scoring the try. Millen. This is going to be danger. It's a little dad through. Lovely play. Beautiful work. So that was Emmanuel Maguta Kona. Wow. What a play of the week. And Nutri Active is uh, making sure that they are sponsoring that, the play of the week. Um, also make sure that you do get onto their cereals. I, I, I think I'm <laughs> loving them right now. And I've eaten uh, from the, the, the bran flakes. I've gone for the whole grain flakes. I've gone for the crunchy, the smooth. Believe me, I'm eating absolutely everything. So Nutriactive, a great big thank you to you uh, for sponsoring the play of the week. Well, Ruby, thank you for your time this week. It's been great. The CBC Rack Show is flying. We're getting out there. Please make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. Like and share on Facebook. And we want your comments. And you can watch all our streaming on there as well as follow on Instagram from us. Thank you very much. We'll catch you next time.